Bumpkin was on parade recently for the latest Bears Inn cooking class. This class was also a fundraiser for the Quetzal Fund, helping young Guatemala Mayan women with full scholarships. For innkeeper Vicki Bach, Pumpkin is a year-round favorite and not just for holidays. The two-hour program covered both sweet and savory dishes, and a special bonus guest, expert Jackie Litwin, speaking on the nutritional benefits of pumpkin. In this video clip, the Bears Inn's Laurel and Norberry, a noted chocolatier and pastry chef, shows how to create a mini-layered trifle dessert. It features pumpkin pudding, gingerbread, and whipped cream topped with candied pecans. As you will see, there is nothing trifle about this trifle. So one thing with any um, types of these desserts, the best thing is that you can make a lot of these ingredients in advance. You can make this uh, gingerbread and put it in your freezer, um, keep it in there, thawed out the day before. Um, a lot of these puddings will last the same way. Um, with any of the nuts, you can keep them in the refrigerator or in the freezer for up to a year, uh, especially the candied ones. So once you candy any of the nuts, well, the great thing too is so that they don't get all that soggy, you just keep them in the freezer. So a lot of these things, like chopping the pecans, I'll do a bunch of them in the food processor at once. Um, so you candy a bunch of them, chop them all up, and then you just label all the little containers in your, in your freezer. So it's really easy to put together things like this, um, last minute for any parties. So we put together quite a few for a lot of big well, meals. Um, how do you candy those? So um, the candy pecans, you usually just start off with like a sugar water base. Um, you bring it up to a boil, and then um, you can tell by the way that the bubbles are going on the top of the, um, of the mixture. When the bubbles start going from really fast to a lot slower and they get bigger, it starts to turn more of an amber color. So you take the, um, you would take the sugar off, you take the nuts and mix them all in, and they're going to look like they have like a white chalky coating on it. So then you put them back on the heat with a little bit of butter. And once the butter melts down, um, you can just take them and spread them out over some parchment paper. Sprinkle them with cinnamon or salt if you'd like, but um, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, you can buy them, we can get them, um, you can get organic candied ones too, like natural grocers. Um, but it's easier to do it just for yourself, that way you can season them if you want to too. So um, what we're going to do, we baked off a gingerbread cake. So the ingredients, yes, we did that out of the box. Um, so this, the way that you put together this dessert is something really easy for you to throw together. Um, any ingredients you can find at your local stores. So we did a box of the uh, um, gingerbread cake. Um, the mixture that we have here, and this is all in your recipes, in the dessert, it's under close the, to the back. yes, close to the back, the gingerbread and pumpkin uh, trifle. So we made a vanilla pudding, and we just did a, the small three ounce box of pudding. We mixed that with the pumpkin pie filling. So one important thing that we've realized here with other people is that there's a difference between canned pumpkin and then an actual pie filling. The pie filling is sweetened. Um, so it's always good to maybe put a little extra sticker on top so you don't replace them for sweet and savory dishes. So we mix together a can of the um, pumpkin pie filling with some of the pudding and just mix it together until it's blended. And we just do it to taste. Obviously, we like a little extra pumpkin in everything we do here. So it's a little strong on the pumpkin side. And then we have the candied nuts. So it's going to be the candy pecans. So we just like the flavor of those the best. And I left some hole to put on the top for decor and the rest of them are chopped to make it easier to eat through. So basically any trifle is a layered dessert. You'll usually layer it with some sort of whipped cream, some sort of a, um, either a bread or a cookie, and then usually fruits or nuts. So as long as it's just layered in the dish, you can call it a trifle. So we're just going to break up the cake. And what we've noticed um, the few times that we've made it is you definitely want a good layer on the bottom of the cake. The pudding will start to soak through. So you want to make sure you get all that flavor in there. So we're just going to break it up in little pieces onto the bottom. So all my cakes that fall and crack and all that, I can just make a try. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Tell you what you can do. Oh yeah. Yeah, even a better thing to do with cookies. And what I've noticed up here too with the elevation, when I first moved here, a lot of the things I was baking would start to fall in the center. Mm -hmm. So I started adding an extra quarter cup to a half a cup of um, flour to the mix. And we've done that with gluten-free flour and regular flour. And since I've done that, I haven't had any problems with them sinking in the center. So that might help too. So we have a good, good layer here on the bottom. Pretty much we're just going to pile on the pudding mixture over the top. So you just want it enough so that when you look at the side of the glass, a big part of dessert is that you see it with your eyes first. So you want it to look appetizing for everybody um, before they taste it. So you want to get a good layer so that it looks pretty even around the side of the glass. And it'll start falling into the bread and that's fine. That's what you want it to do. 
You don't want to push it down into it or you're going to have a really thick layer of pudding. And then I already whipped some cream. Um, we use just regular whipping cream and a lot of people put a ton of sugar in it to sweeten it. Um, we don't really like to do that because there's so much sugar in the rest of the recipe. So I did about, for the entire recipe, I did two and a half cups of whipping cream and I added about a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And then I just like to throw a few things in there. So I'll add some vanilla or pumpkin pie spice, which is what I did with this. And then I just sort of taste it a few times and see if I like and I'll add a little bit more. Um, but we put the amount of um, ingredients that we did on there. So I whip it till it's really stiff peaks. Uh, for those of you that don't know when you're whipping it, it's when you, if you take the whisk out and you can hold it up and it holds the peak on the top when it starts to fold over, that's when you know that it's stiff peaks. So you want this to be pretty stiff, almost butter-like. So that way it holds up in the fridge. So we're just going to smooth this out over the top. And all of these you can sort of do to your liking. Um, you do want it to have like the layers throughout it, but you also want it to look like they're somewhat even. And you can buy cool whip. You can do that too if you don't want to whip it yourself. That's fine. We just like the flavor of this because it's a little less sweet. So we'll sprinkle that with some of the chopped pecans that we already have that are candied and chopped. Costco. And they're really good. And then you just pretty much go through and do the same thing over again. And I'm just putting these on so I'm not touching everybody's cake. <laughs> I don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> so at this part too, you can start to sort of push the cake down into it. You really just want the cake to get saturated with all of the flavors. And I usually notice there's a little bit extra of all these ingredients in all the bowls, um, so I can go snack on them when we're done. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason why I do that. <laughs> it's not fair if you cook for everybody. You don't get to try it all yourself, too. We're that. And Lola is gluten-free, and she makes some amazing things that she's never able to taste. Oh, like the yeah. cakes that she does are not gluten-free. Mm -hmm. She just makes these pretty cakes and can't taste them. Mm -hmm. Going through culinary school was interesting doing that. Yeah. But, um, it's something I have to do. It's not really a choice. I just have to. So you just make do. And you find fun ways to make desserts you can't eat. <laughs> so if you buy store-bought gluten-free bread, do you have a brand that you like? Because so far I haven't found one that I really The Canyon Bakery is my favorite. Um, you can usually get it at um, Sprouts has it. And sometimes the natural grocers up here carries it, but not always. Um, but that one's my favorite, is the Canyon Bakery, all of theirs. And then at natural grocers up here, they have Against the Grain. Um, they have great baguettes. Those are my favorite baguettes to get. I haven't tried any of their other products yet, um, but those are my two favorite. And then for any baking mixes, I like Pamela's. So the Pamela's baking mix, the baking and pancake mix is great. I you just substitute that mix for flour in almost every recipe. Um, it's my favorite for breads and muffins. Um, if you're doing a cake, I usually would go with their the actual, just their Pamela's flour. But that to me has the best taste and consistency when you're baking with it. So we've sort of had fun here just trying new things with mixing almond flour or coconut flour. But um, if you are worried about the gluten structure and actually getting the cake to rise, I would go with the actual, yeah, the, the actual flour. So at this point, um, sorry. at home I have a lot of fun little piping tips and bags. Here I just wanted to show something basic. We got some of the basic bags from Walmart um, for the piping bags and just they have like standard tips you can get for a couple dollars. So I just, when I make the desserts I like it for the presentation. So I just fill this, the bag with the same whipped cream. So that's why I did it to the real stiff peaks. So you can just go through and not do that. Well. It was supposed to be little flowers, but I just pulled that out, and we don't have time to do another one. So you would just go through, and you can make little dollops all around the top. You can make little flowers. Uh, you can make any sort of design that you'd like all throughout it. The whole point is just to get the top layer covered. And if you don't want to do that, it's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, stuff. you can just smear Stroll it all over the it, top. Yeah. and Drink it with nuts. Exactly. Yeah. And I leave little spaces. I like to go through and decorate it and make it look like a big flower on the top. Um, however you'd like it to look. So usually with that amount of cream, there's enough to fill it to the top. 
and then I just go through with all the little spaces and uh, I'll fill it with the nuts on the top and then drizzle it with the crumb sauce. And this is just a store-bought sauce. It's the Ghirardelli's. That's our favorite for the flavor. Um, and this lasts for a long time in the refrigerator, too. And then I'll just go through and make little designs on the top with candy nuts. And then uh, when you're serving it, you just want to make sure you kind of scoop all the way down to the bottom, get everything in for everybody. And, and then you can refrigerate it for up to mm -hmm. a day. Probably. Several days, actually. Yeah. I've had, yeah. So I think if you whip the cream enough, then you should be able to refrigerate it for a good amount of time. It still tastes really good. And it's really good made the night before so that the flavors have a chance. Did, did you, did, should you let it sit for a while before you serve it, or you just make it? Well, today it? we want it. <laughs> yeah, you could do it Yay. like the night before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll stick it in the fridge and then we'll have it a little while later. Can you say one more time the kind of bread that you were talking about? Oh, it's oh. Canyon Bakery? Yeah. Um, I use there, they have like a whole grain one. And then the against the grain, it's, all, it's like a paleo bread. Um, they use, I think it's like a nut base mm -hmm. um, okay. with almond flowers. But that one, they have baguettes, and they have a rosemary and a regular one, and they're amazing. And they, they're frozen. You find them in the frozen section. Okay. Usually with a lot of the gluten-free breads, you should get them frozen and thaw them out yourself because they don't sell as fast at the store. So if they've been sitting out for a while, then I've just heard that a lot of people have had issues with it. So I always get my breads in the frozen section. And yeah, you just have fun with the little nuts on the top, and we'll let this sit for a while, and you guys can try it as soon as we're done with all the rest of this. Your treats be made. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our Bears In video channel for more excerpts to be posted here, and email us for your copy of the Bears In Pumpkin Cookbook.